Coverage you can count on begins with an Augusta teen still behind bars tonight, accused of raping his 14-year-old girlfriend this past summer. Kane Lord was just 17 when he was arrested in July and charged with the crime of rape. Once he turned 18, though, Lord was transferred to the Webster Detention Center, and the crime he allegedly committed became public. And then last week, Emily Zavada, Lord's girlfriend and his alleged victim, took her own life. The teen suicide shocking the Grovetown community. News Channel 6's Ashley Jones spent the afternoon with Emily's family. And Ashley, Emily's mother says her message is one she hopes the public will understand. That's right, Jenny. Janet Majeski, Emily's mother, told me as a parent, we have to know what our children are up to at all times. Ms. Majeski and her granddaughter sat down with me this afternoon and showed me what she found after going through Emily's room and that what the teen was going through was so much more than what she led her family to believe. She read Emily's journal to me, the very last entry before taking her own life, read in part, he destroyed me. <laughs> She was fixing to be 15, really excited about the driver's license. She had uh, almost had me talked into letting her get a little nose piercing. Janet Majeski says her daughter Emily was a shy girl with a heart filled with passion. She was so kind and she felt everything so deeply. Um, she was very artistic. She designed clothes. Um, and she didn't sew. She would like, I'd buy her a shirt, and next thing I'd see, it was cut and held together with safety pins, you know. Smart, artistic, creative, kind are just a few words Emily's mother used to describe her. I saw kids in school that were being bullied. She would go make friends with them. And everybody that's spoken or sent messages say that she was my best friend. But at the tender age of 14, with so much potential, Emily decided to take her own life. Her mother, Janet, found her hanging in her closet. Into her room and to see if she'd open her window. And it was closed. So I turned around and her closet door was open and I saw her feet. Majeski says she originally thought her daughter was playing a joke on her. I laughed and I was like, Emily, you're trying to scare me this morning. And she didn't say anything, so I walked up to the closet and moved the clothes. And her head was down. Thank God I didn't see her face. She says she found Emily hanging by the belt she would wear to school every day. And I touched her and she was cold. So I ran in here and I got a knife. <laughs> and went back and I cut her down. And she, she didn't fall to the floor. She just went back like a mannequin up against the wall. She was stiff. Majeski points to Kane Lord, Emily's ex-boyfriend for her death. She describes the relationship as both emotionally and physically abusive. He was very controlling. He made her put the Life 360 app on her phone and he had it on his, so he would always know where she was. And it's kind of ironic, that's how the police found him. They had Emily's phone and could follow where he was on Life 360. Majeski says she learned her daughter was raped after going through her room and finding Emily's journal. One entry described the attack in detail. Majeski says they took that entry to police and Lord was later arrested. It's his fault. He caused it. He tortured her and she couldn't get away from it. Annabelle was one of Emily's nieces. She says that kids at school wouldn't make it easy for her to forget what happened to her. They taunted her about it. That's like the way he described it. Like they taunted her about it. Like they were like, that's you on the news. We know that's you, that he did that too. Emily's mom tells me she wants parents to learn from what happened to Emily, to go ahead and invade their privacy if you have to, just to keep them safe. Funeral arrangements for Emily are Friday at 11 a.m. at King's Funeral Home. Because of the extenuating circumstances within the Zavala family, they're asking for help from the community to give Emily a proper memorial service. If you'd like to help, there is a GoFundMe account set up called Help Memorialize Emily Elijah Zavala. And if you'd like to donate in person, an account has been created at Queensboro National Bank. 
please be aware of those asking for other methods to help out the Zavala family. Reporting live here in the newsroom, I'm Ashley Jones, WJBF News Channel 6.